Did I just see what I think I saw in Selector Infected with Cross? Did I see Cube? Did I see Cube? What? What? I just. Okay, you're not. Nobody's gonna tell me opposite and say that was not Cube. My you is Cube. Because. Pink little eyes, white face. That's fucking Cube. There is no denying that. I think Slacker Infected with Cross better watch their back. They're gonna get some type of copyright infringement from freaking Ma Monica Magica. Because Cube is going to force them into a contract. A copyright contract. Because that is fucking Cube. Okay, so now that we got past that entire point, I am loving this series more and more by each episode. I, a lot of people have had their doubts with Selector Infected with Cross. A lot of people have doubted this series. They've looked uh, at the series and said, Oh, it's just another card game anime. I'm just going to throw it underneath the rug and I'm just going to skip past it. I understand those opinions. But this series, as I have said many times, many, many times, even the first episode review, I have said this series is going to be good. I can tell by the way it's setting it up. And as we all know by now, if we start, you know, this far along in the series, we could probably already see how badass this series is starting to get. And we already know there's going to be a season two. We also know that this is an anime original story. So nobody knows exactly what could happen. But at the same time, this could be bad. Because it could easily go off track and destroy its writing, make a massive amount of plot holes that completely just burns into the ground. That could easily happen with any anime original series. But I am not going to look at this series right now. It hasn't done nothing that really pisses me off and say it's bad so far it's been very good somewhat predictable but good it's been a very good series so let's get into this episode review so my theory i had last week about yuzuki and the fear a week before that actually i had a theory on yuzuki pretty much how if she was to reveal the information that she could steal someone's body like lrgs can steal bodies from their selectors that most likely there must be a consequence for the lrg to reveal this information i might explain why kanyo never you know really revealed to yuzuki that she would steal her body so we find out that pretty much if you know these lrgs were to reveal this information and cause the selector not to fight or bataru anymore it would make the LRIGs never being able to leave their card. So right there, it just shows you the tension that these LRIGs are underneath. So if they reveal this secret, they are stuck in this card forever. So as we can clearly see from this episode, Yuzuki is forever trapped in that card. But there might be hope. There might be hope. This is my fury. My fury is coming up right now. As we have seen in this series, okay, there's been a lot of different things that's popped up that's crazy. Like, Hitoi is now uh, the second time a selector. She's lost her wish of being friends, and now she's a selector again with Yuzuki. So, uh, here's the big question. I don't know if it actually has been said before. I don't know if it has or not. But is it possible for a selector to have two LRIGs? For one person. I mean, is it possible? Think about this, okay? What if it's possible for Ruko to have, you know, Yuzuki and Tama as her LRIGs? I mean, it, it, it seems like it kind of be possible. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, it would overall, if you look at it at different standpoints, I guess they could shift you between each other's bodies, and at the same time, it might counteract, you know, one of the, you know, the selector's body getting stolen. I mean, I don't know, there, there could be something weird going on here, but I mean, this rule hasn't, I guess, specifically been stated that, you know, there can be two LRGs for selectors. It hasn't been said no or yes to, so I really don't know the information around that, but it, it could be possible. That could be possible for how, you know, Yuzuki could not be trapped in the card. For instance, if Yuzuki was to take Ruko's body, and she becomes her LRIG, she could leave the card since technically Ruko would be her new selector. You get what I'm saying here? I mean, they've never said that we could never switch selectors. I mean, seriously, if you think about it like that, it really hasn't been stated yet. So I don't know if the actual writers have noticed this or not. But I mean, this could lead to Yuzuki being fine and okay. So another thing pops up in this episode that has been foreshadowed since episode number one. Now, I don't know if you caught on what the foreshadowing was, but I want to let you know. As we all have heard multiple times now, we stuck true to the Dark Fiends, and we've known since episode 1, if you stared at the Dark Fiends that was already hinting off and flowing off this series, you probably already knew what, you know, pretty much Ruko's mother said to her when she was younger. You're scary. I don't know her anymore. And did we not hear those lines again this episode? Think about it. Think about it. Hitoe's mother said that to Ruko. But, I mean, it was aimed at Hitoe. So, if we think about this, okay, what has happened to Hitoe? She has lost. 
her wish. She can no longer have friends, as we all know. Very depressing seeing her on screen. I still cry every time I see her on screen. But, I mean, pretty much, she can no longer have friends. But now she's a new selector, and she can make friends if she gets her wish granted. But, she has changed. Since that wish negated and she can no longer have friends, she's changed. She's become a different person. She's scary now. That is what Hitoi's mother has said this episode. So, we really don't know a given date when this game we cross really started. We don't know if it started 50 years ago in this timeline of this series. So, what if Ruko at one given time lost? Lost her wish and she no longer has a wish because she lost that wish and she cannot remember it. It could be possible. I mean, if you think about it, that could explain the entire bits of why Ruko no longer has a wish. She lost the past and lost something. She doesn't know what it is, but she lost something. So, right here. Very interesting. Very interesting. But, you know, there's other things that pop up here that make me wonder why. As we all have seen by now, Aki Lucky, as we all know her, we haven't seen her in a couple episodes now, but we know that she can remember selectors and we cross. We know that. But we see in the other opposite coin, Hitoi really didn't remember anything about, you know, LRIGs. So, it seems to me like there's different effects for different wishes that cause people to forget about the game and LRIGs and selectors. So, I wonder exactly what was the different reason why, you know, Aki Lucky decided to continue to remember. I, I don't know. But there is a lot of mysteries in this series. A lot of different things that could pop up. And I feel like Selector Infected with Cross is just right now really dabbing into these theories. I mean, hopefully they're not going to write themselves into massive plot holes. Because I've enjoyed the series. I still love it. And it, it's just looking more and more interesting by each passing week. By the way they're building up this series. And then we get to see Cube in the fucking flesh again in a new anime. Just, just oh my god. And then, okay, so... Overall, another thing we get to see is that Hanya, we get to see more about her character. We see that she had a possibility of saving Yuzuki. If she really cared about Yuzuki like Yuzuki cared for Hitoe, Hanya would have said something to Yuzuki and told her that she was going to steal her body. Think about this. A lot of people tried to defend her last week in the review and stuff, saying that most likely she did that because there was something else going on. But you're not going to tell me. Hanyo had the best intentions in mind. She may be doing that now after she stole Yuzuki's body, but it doesn't matter because Yuzuki sacrificed her ability to leave the card to tell Hitoe that she would steal her body and stop her from having endless pain. Yuzuki did that, but Hanyo didn't. And Hanyo was supposedly Yuzuki's friend? Yeah, you're not going to tell me that Hanyo is, you know, the friend of Yuzuki when she was willing to go that far. So overall, I feel like... Yuzuki should be very pissed about this entire moment. She really should. I understand why Yuzuki at the same time, I guess, is understanding of Hanyo's situation since she's now an LRIG. But it still brings up the question is, like, why is she not more pissed? I mean, your entire reason you wanted your wish was to be with your brother. But you're not technically with your brother, even if you were to go into someone else's body, you know, another selector's body, let's say if you did steal Hitoi's body, it wouldn't technically be what you want. But if you think about it like that, I mean, I guess it would be right, too, with the overall bro-sis relationship, if you think about it. I mean, if Yuzuki technically did go into Hitoi's body, but it's it just a lot of questions, okay? And there's another thing that pops up that's been a, a major, big mystery in this series, is Tama. Tama is one of those things, just downright the wild card of this series. I mean, Tama, as we can clearly see in this episode, she really does not know anything. We can tell that she has conflict in her mind. She was uh, just downright alone in this episode, and she did not know what she wanted to do. So, as we can clearly see, Tama is something different. Something very, very different. She doesn't even know who this Mayu is. So... I'm just curious exactly what is Tama? What is Tama? Is she really a real human? Is she a girl? Or is she something else? So overall, I want to leave the episode review on here. Tell me your thoughts on this episode, everybody. I love you all so much. Please be safe. Chibi out.